What's happening, Hexo traders and investors? Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with POW Group. Today is Wednesday, January 5th. I hope everyone is doing well out there today. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some updates with regards to Health Canada. They finished their examination of Redican, Hexo's recently acquired company. We're gonna look at some updates on that, but essentially it is a green light and all systems go. We're also gonna take a look at some Hexo news. They appointed a new board member and also a new interim CFO and a few other articles that I wanna share with you as well. And we're gonna look at some charting and some analysis on the broader market and Hexo as the spy, the overall broader market saw some weakness today. MJ held up fairly well, all things considered. But before we jump into today's content, make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel, tick the bell, and you'll be notified on any future updates. And let me know in the comments below if you think this is bullish or bearish for Hexo. Personally, I think this news is bullish. So this is a French article that came out today. And just as a heads up for anybody that doesn't know, you can open any French article up in Google Chrome and it will translate it, ask you to translate it into your native language. So whatever language you have is set, or you can just add an extension to any browser, the Google Translate extension, which I've done here in the Brave browser. And you can see here, it just translated it into uh, into English for me. So I'll put the links in the description of this video for your reference, but we'll go over the Canadian version as I, uh, sorry, the English version as I am English as my primary language. So Health Canada has finished examining an acquisition of Hexo. Under the magnifying glass of the authorities in Quebec, Ottawa, in the wake of the acquisition of the company linked to an individual who would have links to the members of the Hells Angels, the cannabis producer Hexo is no longer the subject of checks from Health Canada responsible for licensing. The Gatineau-based company at the heart of the strategic reorganization to resolve its financial difficulties recently obtained this confirmation from the department. The information was not released publicly, and for the moment, we consider that our review is finished, and we do not intend to ask you for any additional information, read the letter from Health Canada. La moving on here, last November, La Journal de Montréal revealed that Ontario producer Redican bought by Hexel last May for $925 million in cash and shares counted the family of Ontario entrepreneur Josh Hill among its shareholders. So the Daily had published photos showing Mr. Hill with men identified by the report as members of the Hells Angels. Another photo showed Mr. Hill surrounded by Peter James, currently a director of Hexo and William Montour, which also just got added, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Hexo is one of the main suppliers of the Société Québécoise du Cannabis and history review. So under the federal regulatory framework surrounding cannabis, the directors and officers of marijuana producer must undergo a criminal background review conducted by the RCMP to prove that they have not or have had ties to the underworld. That they must also obtain security clearance. Hexo is very pleased, let's go over this here. So Hexo is very pleased with the conclusion of Health Canada's audits, the company said in a statement on Tuesday. This is a testimony that shows that we operate of the highest standards of regulatory compliance. I've been saying this since the get-go that I wasn't paying any attention to it. I said that this was BS and it was just FUD and now we have the proof. So Mr. Hill was the head of the number of companies that were among shareholders of Redican prior to the acquisition of Hexo. If the federal authorities had detected any irregularities, the producer's licenses could have been revoked. The details surrounding the steps taken by Health Canada were not yet specified. In Quebec, the permanent anti-corruption unit, so UPAC, carries out checks following a request from the authority Autorité de Marché Public, so AMP, responsible uh, for certificates that allow companies to bid on public contracts. Hexo also holds a certificate to do business with the SQDC. The struggles of the marijuana producer, which made three recent acquisitions, Zenibus, Redican, 48 North, prompted a major reorganization last fall. Its co-founder and CEO, Sebastian St. Louis, as well as the CEO, COO, Donald Courtney, left. Scott Cooper, who was previously the head of Trust Beverages, he also worked for Molson Coors is an executive for I think 12 years uh, and uh, Trust Beverages is a joint venture between Molson Coors Canada and Hexo. Uh, so he took the reins there, as we all know. The company lost 117 million in the first quarter, ended October 31st, again, throwing that financial FUD in there. Got, got to throw that, you know, a little bit uncertainty at the end just to uh, to avoid any longs going, going long, right? Uh, so the new management announced last month a strategic plan to reduce the cost and streamline operations among others. And again, it's just very suspect that this all came out after tax loss selling. We also know that they appointed a new board member. So this likely had to do with that, right? They wanted to get this confirmation before announcing any changes, uh, spe specifically Will Montour to the board of directors. And that's not new information. We knew that he was going to be joining eventually. Uh, so this is just Hexo playing out uh, as part of its original strategy uh, with the merger of, uh, of Redican. And Hexo is listed on the Quebec lobbyist registry since it would like to obtain a financial boost from the state. The Legault government has ruled out this scenario for the moment. On the Toronto Stock Exchange on Tuesday, the cannabis producer shares closed at 91 cents, up 3 cents, or 3.4%. The title 
had reached nearly $42 in April of 2010, uh, sorry, 2019. So fairly, uh, fairly mixed article, but like I said, essentially putting that Hells Angels FUD to rest. And like I said, I called BS on that from the, from the get-go. And also Hexo announces appointment of new board member and acting CFO. So Will Montour joined the board. Like I said, we already knew that this was going to be coming down the line. It was just uh, Hexo, you know, crossing their eyes, uh, you know, dotting their eyes and crossing their T's, so to speak, making sure there was no issues there with the, you know, with Health Canada and that examination that was going on. So not not a coincidence that we had both of those news pieces released in the same day, in my opinion. I think they went uh, hand in hand. And also they appointed the new CFO, interim CFO, Curtis Solzvig. So he's going to be the acting CFO, uh, CFO effective immediately. We are fortunate that Kurt was able to join Hexo. Scott Cooper said, I look forward to leveraging Kurt's many years of financial leadership, particularly his experience with complex restructuring situations. The board and I have confidence in Kurt's ability to lead our financial team while Hexo searches for a permanent CFO. So personally, this doesn't sound like a company that's going bankrupt. Uh, they're in search for a permanent CFO of a company that was going bankrupt. Would they really be doing that? And like I said, he has all these uh, different skill sets with debt and restructuring and, you know, avoiding bankruptcy, dealing with bankruptcy, all of that, uh, all of that stuff. So I think that they're bringing him in here temporarily to fix sort of, you know, fix the books, fix the financial issues that we have. And then they'll bring in a more permanent CFO, hopefully somebody with a bit more, um, you know, sought after uh, reputation, maybe somebody from a fortune 500 or 200 company. Uh, that's what I would like to see. And he would also like to thank Trent McDonald. So shout out to Trent for your dedication to the company over the years. Kurt has extensive experience improving operations, reducing costs, making more efficient use of working capital and implementing balance sheet solutions. Mr. Solzig also has extensive ex expertise in the fund management business, including portfolio and financial management, fund administration, and board level supervision. He has over 30 years of senior management and consulting experience with companies including Lilly, Restoration Hardware, Borders Books, and Atari. He graduated from Harvard College with a BA in economics and, uh, yeah, he also went to Harvest Business School as well for an MBA. So I brought up his profile. I'm pretty sure this is him here. But you can see here he worked for interim CEO of PTC Group Holdings. So a company led the, leading the company through bankruptcy and refinancing as a result of failed diversification strategy. So like I said, experience with you know navigating bankruptcies. Also initiated operational restructuring focused on cost reduction, improved quality and delivery performance and an IT upgrade. So again, Lots of experience with debt, restructuring. I think this is what Hexo needs. Again, some people might jump to conclusions here with bankruptcy, but I, I don't think that that's, I really don't think Hexo is going bankrupt. We know that they're on verge for uh, positive um, EPS, so they're going to be uh, achieving financial profitability, and that's going to come from operations, and that could happen in 2022 but I believe it'll probably be the last quarter of 2022 or the first quarter of 2023. So once they achieve profitability, then problem solved. Debt issues are a thing of the past. Uh, but like I said, I think this is more toward the, the debt and the restructuring and the mergers and acquisitions from all of the companies, Zenibus, 48 North and Redican. So I think this is just a stopgap. Like I said, bring him in, sort of clean up the mess, and then we'll bring in a more permanent CFO at a later date. Moving on here, so just... They had the, an update here on the Hexa website. So William Todd Montour is there uh, on the director, on the board of directors now. And you can see here, Pete Montour has been on there for a while. Um, there's some speculation that Redican could potentially be trying to take a hostile takeover in, in Hexo. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with that. I think they own about 70 million shares out of the 350 million shares that are outstanding. So it would make sense. And, you know, they've got a ton of money likely from the, from the sale of Redican to do so. But personally, I think they maintain a good relationship. And, uh, it's, I, you know, it's, it's entirely possible. I don't foresee that as a possibility. But uh, we're going to continue to, to be keeping an eye out for that. And also something else I want to uh, keep an eye out for, and if everybody else can keep an eye out for it as well, is the corporate presentation. We were supposed to have an updated corporate presentation and investor deck uh, three weeks ago. And that isn't like Hexo to say they're going to do something and don't do not do it. So I'm wondering what is in that corp presentation, that investor deck that they don't want us to know about just yet? And why are they waiting into the new year after tax loss selling? Might there be something with regards to a new product or a new product line or new categories? Um, could it be something with regards to the CPG partner? We knew that they were going to be doing piloting in Quebec toward the ending uh, to, in the last quarter of 2021. And they said national rollout into the first quarter of 2022. Well, 
we're into the first quarter of 2022, so you just gotta, you know, help but wonder, can't help but wonder if there's something in there they don't want us to know about just yet. If it's positive, I, I would assume that it's gonna be positive. Why are they holding that, holding that back? I think there's going to be some very telling and, uh, and exciting information in that new investor deck, personally. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. Also saw an article from MJ Biz Daily today. Analysts cut hundreds of millions of, from Tilray, Canopy, and Aurora. MJ sales forecast. So a lot of people were speculating whether or not this is why MJ was down today. Well, in case you were hiding under a rock and you weren't checking the, uh, the, the broader market, uh, we had a huge drawback in SPY, the S&P 500 today. So I think that coupled with this, um, you know, we had some, some market sentiment. Uh, the sector sentiment, you know, kind of, trending lower here in anticipation of these earnings coming up in in January. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Personally, I think Tilray, Canopy, and Aurora are gonna struggle from here. And they go on to mention some competition, but again, they failed to mention Hexo, which is the number one market share leader. You can see here over 12% and now Hillray down below, uh, Tilray down below 10%. So that's a pretty big uh, gap now that they've since, uh, you know, created for themselves and we didn't e we weren't even worthy of, an, of a mention here. I'm, I've been bullish on Oxley and or or Organogram uh, for a while now and they mentioned them, but you can see here Oxley also shot up in the list as well and they own 6%, but Hexo being number one, they, they didn't feel it was necessary to mention them. Uh, obviously they would have taken some of that market share away and some of those sales, right? So again, just seems like they're trying to hold Hexo back and uh, I'm not worried whatsoever. Still holding, I actually bought some more Hexo today, uh, first purchase of 2022, and I will add again if we get to the 50 cent area, USD. Also did a poll on my YouTube community channel, make sure to go and vote, but essentially the poll was when the crypto bull market ends, the cannabis bull market will begin, true or false. So let me know um, your thoughts on that, go cast your vote on the community page on the POW Group YouTube channel. Personally, I think that there's just too much friction uh, until it's widely accessible. I don't think that crypto is going to uh, see the similar bull market at the same time, right? And the reason for that is because it takes too long to get funds in and out of crypto. And a lot of the same crypto traders trade MJ and it's the more younger demographic, you know, between 25 and, and uh, 55 years old. And what I think is, is the reason for that is because the market makers are greedy, right? They wanna, they wanna get max hype and euphoria. And by doing, the way they can do that is by having the uh, opposite market cycle. So when cannabis is in a bull market, crypto is in a bear market and vice versa. And again, until we can buy crypto in our regular stockbroker accounts, I don't think that this is going to change because it takes too long to get in and out of positions, withdraw from the exchanges, get that into your bank account and then put that money into your trading account, right? There's just too much friction there. So until we can buy crypto in the same, you know, uh, think Thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade or RBC Direct Investing, until we can buy crypto in there, uh, then I really don't think that that's going to change. But personally, uh, I think that we're going to see the end of the bull market sometime in 2022 for crypto. Then we're gonna see the bull market for MJ begin sometime in 2022, 2023. And then we'll likely run up into US full-blown legalization into 2024, 2025, similar to what happened in Canada. I think that's a similar landscape and what we can expect for a blueprint. Also wanna, before we jump into some Hexo analysis real quick, wanna uh, go over a tweet here that I made earlier today. So pretty much bang on, I said, SPY daily consolidation underway and selling pressure is picking up leading into the Fed meeting that happened today. No support nearby really until EMA 26 at 469.50. And after that, we can expect the support trend line support around the 460 area. And bringing up SPY here, you can see here that we close right at the low of the day. We have absolutely no support on the price action down to 451.14 on the daily time frame. We close below EMA 26, that's bearish. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a gap down tomorrow. And like I said, watch for a potential bounce at that 460 area. I remember letting Power Group private members know in the Power Group community, I said, if you're looking for a potential short opportunity on SPY, now's the time. You can see here we had a daily bull flag that was confirming, ended up being a bull trap, rejected at that resistance. And uh, yeah, it was a great short opportunity. And if you're looking to potentially short SPY for the long term, uh, like I said, anywhere around that 480 area, I was shouting from the rooftops that uh, that was a great potential top fish opportunity in short entry. And here we are going potentially back down to this support area at 460. So like I said, that was due to the Federal Reserve putting wheels in motion for the balance sheet reduction. So tapering of uh, bond purchases, that type of thing. Also, um, we know that they're going to be ramping up potential uh, interest rate hikes over the next couple of months. 
Also, the SEC announced today that the crypto uh, deadline for the spot ETF was going to be in a couple months. So that all lines up well. Um, they're trying to get that last blow off top and sell the news event, I think, in crypto over the next couple months. And that would line up well for a crypto blow off top sometime around March or April. And then we see MJ start its bull market sometime around then as well as we know Chuck Schumer um, has also hinted that bills could see some traction, uh, you know, some safe banking acts, uh, the more acts, safe banking, we have full blown legalization as well. That could happen into 2022, 2020, uh, 2023. But Chuck Schumer and, and many other congressional leaders also expect some movement by April. And what I could see happening is safe banking updates and progress. And then we we see hype into that. And then we hear about full-blown legalization. We see some more hype. And then once full-blown legal comes out in the U.S., that's when we see the solid news event, similar to what happened to the Canadian uh, rollout of recreational legal cannabis. So taking a look at Hexo chart here. So not really much to go over here. There's just psychological numbers. So we're going to be watching $50 psychological. We also have the daily bottom Bollinger Band there at 59 cents USD. This is the NASDAQ ticker. So all prices mentioned in US dollars. Also, the RSI is trending higher. So a little bit of divergence there from our capitulation bottom back here on the 20th of August. And like I said, we're trending higher there and the price is trending lower. So we're seeing a little bit of divergence there and RSI trending upward, which is good to see. We also have the MACD bullish, which we'll look at here in just a second on the weekly. But daily EMA 12 and the 10 day moving average is rejecting price right now like a brick wall. So if we can close a daily candle above EMA 12, it's essentially nothing to see here, right? So we're just going to be expecting more downside until we change daily and weekly trends. Bulls prove absolutely nothing. But personally, I'm just in DCA mode. So dollar cost, dollar cost averaging mode. Uh, I've got my average down to about $2.25 now. And like I said, I'm holding for the long term. I'm not worried at all. I've got multiple MJ holdings. I own more crypto at the moment than I do MJ. And I'm going to be looking to rotate some of those crypto profits. Plan is to sell about 80 to 90 percent of my crypto holdings, rotate them over to Hexo, for example, and beaten down MJ, other MJ stocks, not just Hexo. I own some ETFs as well. MSOS uh, in the States I really like. And uh, we had some consolidation today on the weekly time frame for MSOS. Change the daily trend. I'll just bring up MSOS real quickly here. But the whole sector is still struggling and MSOS changed its daily trend. And then we just got knocked right back down here, coming back down to 2308 support. But we are coming up on a potential weekly trend change here with a low high. If we can form a higher low compared to 2308 and break resistance here at the high of 2651, that'll confirm a weekly uptrend, which we know is required before we expect any long term reversal and uh, and bear market bottom being set. So again, let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, if you think that we're going to see the MJ bull market start once the crypto bull market ends. And the MACD, like I said, on Hexo is still extremely bullish. And if we just go back, I mentioned this a few times now, but if we just go back about three years on the chart, the last time that weekly MACD crossed bullish, bullish was back in December of 2019. So about two years ago, a little over two years ago, and it took a while for that price to really see some some upswing and some positive momentum. So again, could be another month, could be two, before we see some really, um, some big momentum and a, and a really big uh, momentum shift in the space. That's my my two cents on that. So going to end it there, like I said, going to be heading to Florida and possibly down to Miami. Uh, we'll see, but uh, like I said, going to be heading there for the month of January, getting, rid of, getting away from this uh, nasty Western uh, Alberta cold. It's currently minus 40 here and you can't go outside for any longer than five minutes. So make sure to stay safe out there, stay warm and check the uh, tick the bell and subscribe to the channel on your way out and you'll be notified on any future updates. I always appreciate the support and we'll see you in the next video.